Look at that. I'm going to go pay that little lady a visit. There'd be trouble. Take care of it now. Hey, ma'am. Hello? This here is the call spread, is it? That's right. Then you'd be Ms. Call. Mrs. Call. That's right. Well, I'll be. There's a matter we wish to discuss with your husband. Is he about? I'm expecting him any time now. We'll wait. Whatever your business is, you may discuss it with me. Uh, well, we represent uh, a party who wishes to uh, purchase your land. <laughs> it's not for sale. Well, you ain't here at the offer yet. Doesn't matter. Our land is not for sale, not for any price. Now, if you'll excuse me. With respect, Mrs. Carl, I think that's a decision for the man of the house, and uh, he ain't here. Mr. Carl. These men want to buy our land. I told them we're not interested. They wouldn't listen. Hey, Mr. Carl. Can I help you? We're looking to buy your land. We figured the man of the house wouldn't want the... Pretty little lady making the decision. My wife speaks for the both of us. We're prepared to make you a generous offer. Here's my offer, mister. You and your friend have got about five seconds to get back in the saddle and clear off our land. Why, hell, is that any way to talk to a gentleman? You ain't no gentleman. <laughs> you know something? You're right. Most folks just wanted the chance to make a life for themselves. But some others, they saw the West as a place where rules and laws didn't mean a thing. <laughs> it took more than laws to keep the dream of a new land alive. It took men and women who had the courage to back them up.
return until you can conduct yourself in a more respectable manner. Bastards! If you don't mind my saying so, ma'am, it ain't a real good idea letting guns in your saloon there. Perhaps not, but I'm afraid there's no law against it. Maybe we can do something about that. Name's Owen Kearney. If this is Curtis Wells, I'd be your new sheriff. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Sheriff Kearney? It's an honor, sir. I see, uh, you've already met Miss Jessup. Josiah Peel. Mr. Peel. On behalf of the town council, I'd like to welcome you to Curtis Wells. Although I must say, your reputation precedes you. I hope folks don't expect too much. Last time I tried walking on water, I almost drowned. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Newt Call. Hey, you wouldn't be any kin to Woodrow Call, would you? Hey, yes, he's my father. Woodrow's boy will all be. As soon as we get the chance, you're going to have to tell me what the captain's been up to all these years. Sure will. So, this is the hornet's nest that's been giving you folks so much trouble. Oh, really? You must admit, Olivia, the Ambrosia does attract a certain lawless element. That is a matter of opinion. Good day, gentlemen. Excuse me. Olivia, you're not going to take this personally. You said it was business. You know something, Josiah? You're not nearly as gruff as you make out. Let's keep that our little secret. Mosby. We just wanted to check the place out, is all. Specifically told you to stay clear of the calls. Yes, sir, Colonel. Mr. Kidd, if you are not of a mind to follow orders, then you will most certainly be replaced. What you are fired up about? Just sodbusters, ain't they? Discretion is vital in this matter. Now, just do as I say, and don't cause any more trouble. Is that clear? You're the boss. Sure was a fine looking woman, though. Oh, thank you. Not to mention that lady in this place. Last I looked, she weren't no wife of yourn. No, is she fit conversation for a prairie rat like you? Well, you wouldn't be sweet on her now, would you? Well, what do you know? A southern gentleman like you, coveting another man's wife. <laughs> Not another word. Crockett, Bowie, and the rest was holding off Santa Ana's boys. Colonel Travis was using us kids as couriers, begging for reinforcements. I was the last one out. By then, he knew it was too late. He wanted me to tell General Houston that they'd fight down to the last man. And they did. They almost was lost. 187 men. spoiled your supper. I'm truly sorry. No. It's just that I didn't know anyone survived. That ain't something to be proud of. As soon as we're finished here, uh, why don't you show me where I'll be hanging my hat? <clears throat> All right, but uh, we don't exactly have a, an office yet, <clears throat> but we do have something that'll do. I see. And uh, what about a jail? Oh. Oh, wait a minute here. If I do happen to apprehend a miscreant, what am I supposed to do with him? Well, up until now, we've been using the granary. <laughs> the granary? <sighs> the granary. A pound of coffee, a tin of tea. I'll need two spools of black thread and one white. Save for me, Mrs. Hackett. 
my, my socks need donning. Uh, you don't need thread, Mr. Mosby. You need a woman who knows how to use it. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more, ma'am. Any idea why I might find one? Oh, I think there are plenty of girls who would love to link their arm in yours, Mr. Mosby. <laughs> well, I'm afraid there's only one woman for me. And that is you, Mrs. Hackett. <laughs> Good day, Mrs. Hackett. Mr. Mosby. Miss Call. I'll put that on your account, Mrs. Call. Well, what do you think? It'll be fine. When I first came to Laredo, we worked out of a livery barn for the first two years. At least we were close to our horses when we needed them. I just want to let you know you're being here. Taking this job is a great honor, sir. Well, I ain't done nothing yet. Woodrow calls boy. Where does the time go? So what's the captain been up to all these years? Well, still running the uh, Hat Creek outfit. Of course, that's in Montana now, uh, up near Miles City. I guess Texas got too crowded for him. <laughs> you hear from him much? Uh, he, uh, he ain't the talkative type. He don't take the letter writing much, neither. <laughs> that's the captain. Don't talk much, but you'd best listen when he does. One time, back in our ranger days, there was these vaqueros down south of the border making raids on the herds up El Paso Way. Captain warned them to stay on their side of the river, but I guess they valued them horses more than they did their own hides. He didn't bother warning them a second time. He gave them a mighty fine burial, though. Better than they deserved, you ask me. What happened? We told them we didn't want to sell, but they wouldn't back off. And then they started in whipping them. When? Hour ago, maybe. It's got to be the same two that was at Mouse Brain. Seen one of them had a whip hanging off the saddle. Well, we'll head out to the counter place. We can trail them from there. We? Being as you've seen these fellows, don't suppose you'd care to ride along. I wouldn't want to go arresting the wrong men. I remember. I remember them just fine. There's an explanation. Our plan is unraveling, Clay. Everything is gonna be fine. If Josiah Peel finds out that I'm involved in this, he'll never forgive me. Well, he'll never find out. Besides, is that really so important to you? I'm tired, Clay. I like it here. I want to settle down. I was hoping for a fresh start. <laughs> yeah, so was I. Unfortunately for people like us, that's easier said than done. Okay. Don't be disheartened, my dear. I just, uh... <laughs> I have a propensity for melancholy. Hey, 
nice little town. Here in the law here. There's a man that hides behind the badge. And he's not hiding behind the bottle. I'll go have a talk with him. Professional courtesy. I'll look around. Stay handsome. Buy a gal a drink? No, thank you, ma'am. not be doing too good if you have to whip a man half to death to get him to sell. You accusing me of barking up the wrong tree, boy. I've been here all day. Ain't that right? That's right. Them horses seem mighty sweated up to have been here all day. What horses are you talking about? I wouldn't. The sheriff's outside. I believe you boys are coming with us. I don't think so. Easy, fellas. No need for gunplay. Show sure is you plan taking us in. You said anything about taking you in? I did. Well, don't look like that's gonna happen, at least not today. Now, I'd be obliged if you boys put your guns back where they belong and we'll walk on out of here. What? Yeah, Sheriff, these are the men that came looking to buy my ranch. I'm telling you, these are the ones! Maybe. Just stay out of Kurt as well and everything will be fine. Let's go, Newt. You coming? What kind of sheriff are you? A grieving kind. Funny, uh, I could have sworn I just saved your life. Yes, you did. I'm much obliged. Son, I learned a long time ago never play the other man's game. You see those rigs they're wearing? Those are gunfighters' rigs. And there was more of them than there was of us. Seems to me you're getting paid to stand up for what's right. You don't get to be as old as I am in this job without knowing what's worth dying for. And this ain't. see enough of you. You should come around more often. Maybe I will. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the sheriff and I were out looking for them fellas that beat up Nathan Connor. We caught up to him in Sweetwater. Glad to hear. Who were they? I don't know their names. Seen one of them before. In here. Drinking. <laughs> Unfortunately, it'd be rather impractical for me to select my customers according to their social desirability. Uh, see, I got to thinking, in a town like ours, where would a fellow like that get the money to buy up big chunks of land? Wealth can be derived from any number of sources. Back in Virginia, my family had a tobacco plantation. Now look at me. I deal in liquor and uh, dreams. The way I figure it, somebody's got to be backing them. 
question is who and why. That is truly intriguing. Please continue. I haven't got the rest figured out yet. Mm. Well, I hope you let me know if you make any progress. I'll be sure to do that. Black nine, red ten. <laughs> it's nice talking to you. Mm -hmm. When I was just a girl, I'd sneak downstairs and watch my father playing poker. After the war, I was left alone with nothing. The things I'd learned came in handy. It seems I have a knack for gambling. I'm sure you do. You must miss your old way of life. Fine things are wonderful, but they don't bring happiness or security. But that's all I want now. You? Especially me. Well then, to security. Uh, Mr. Peel? Ma'am. Oh, where's Hannah? She's over at Mrs. Hackett's. What about those men that whipped Nathan Connor? When we caught up to them, seemed they had the advantage and got away. Oh, don't worry, we're gonna get them. I hope so. Well, good night. Something wrong? Not at all. No. Where were we? Sure. Mm. Colonel Clay Mosby, I trust I'm not disturbing you. No, no, not at all, Mr. Mosby. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you're here. I was going to go and buy the uh, saloon, pay a visit, just to get acquainted. Huh. I assume you've heard the rumors about my little establishment. Rumors? <laughs> the way people talk, you'd think the ambrosia would be a blight on Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> I've heard a few things. Don't put much stock in them, though. Over the years, I've gotten the habit of setting my own mind. Funny how things work out, isn't it? I mean, you've only been here but a few days, and already there's trouble. Nothing I can't handle. Oh, no, absolutely. And in that regard, I'm here as a concerned citizen. I wish to offer my whole heart of support. And just how would you do that, Mr. Mosby? Well, a man in my line of work can't help but hear things. I might even go so far as to say that I might be a valuable source of information. At what price? Well, now you insult me, sir. My offer is unconditional. Uh, your friendship is reward enough. Good morning, my dear. I trust you and Mr. Peel had an enjoyable evening. They know about Gibb and the others, Clay. It's falling apart. Here they are. They don't know anything. Thanks to your feminine charms, we are among the select few who know of Northern Pacific's plans to route the railroad through Curtis Wells. I paid dearly for that information. And you will soon be very wealthy indeed. You're not the only one whose way of life was destroyed by the war. And I assure you, it's a harder road for a woman alone than you can ever imagine. Perhaps given his men are incapable of exercising discretion. I'll get somebody else. want just come for a friendly talk is all we've had it get off my land now that ain't polite I'm gonna call my husband he's inside no he ain't
place to share. Is there something wrong? We're all right, Father. What happened? One of those men came after Hannah. It's all right. Be safe here. I'm going after him. You be careful, Newt. I will. Hold it, Newt. I'm the law around here, remember? I remember. I want you to do your damn job. I intend to, but we're going to need more men. How many men do you need? There's only three of them. Enough so we don't lose any. We're going to do this proper, Newt. I know you're all steamed up about this. I would be, too. But if we're prepared and do this right, we can trail them for as long as it takes. I'll go see how many men I can find. They were attacked. Oh, my God. It's one of the men that beat Nathan Connor. No, it can't be. Stay here. What you doing here? Once again, you have disobeyed my orders. It's not something I take lightly. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to sever our arrangement. What's this about? Beating up innocent people is not the way I do business. Well, I guess we don't see things the same way. You don't deserve this. But I am a man of my word. Thanks, Colonel. Appreciate that. I think it's best if you just left and did not return. It's fine by me. No hard feelings, Mr. Mosby. By the way, I paid the calls another visit. Now I know why you carry a fancy for that wild little gal. Had us a real good time. <laughs> I don't want to hurt you. Josiah. You're involved, aren't you? When I arrived in New Orleans, I had nothing. And no one to help me but my sweet self. 
I don't need to hear this. Oh, yes, you do. I'm sure you've heard it all before, anyway. A pretty woman on her own with no money. Stop it. Some months ago, I, I became friendly with a man of wealth and influence in order to obtain some information. You're capable of anything, aren't you? You know, the only thing we have in common, Josiah, is that both of us wish I was respectable. That's true. I suppose we're both doomed to disappointment. First light. Newt, over here and sit down. I got something for you. You see that? That's the difference between justice and revenge. Your father taught me that. And I know he'd be right proud to see you wearing this. I don't know. I understand. Ain't something to take lightly. I was just, I don't know if I'm ready. You're ready. Whether you pin it on or not, you got it in your blood. I've only known a few real heroes in my time, and your father's one of them. Now, you won't have to wear it often, but you will if you want to ride with me. About what happened back in Sweetwater, I owe you an explanation. It ain't my nerve that's leaving me. It's my damn joint. Some mornings I can hardly move. If I wake up and something don't hurt, <laughs> I think I'm dead. <laughs> oh, I can still handle most of the job, but truth be told, I could use a little help. I've been giving it some thought, Clay, and I want you to buy me out. I can't be a part of this anymore, not the way things have turned out. I'm sorry I feel that way. Josiah, wait. Please. I'm leaving. I'm sorry it had to come to this, but I... We're closed. Not anymore, you're not. Get inside. I know we wasn't supposed to come back here, but hell, I just couldn't resist. I admire your boldness. Although I must say, your intelligence is very much in question. If I was you, I'd watch my damn mouth. Come on, Gib. Let's get the money and get out of here. I don't think you fully understand the situation. Mr. Gib here wants satisfaction as well as just money. <laughs> as I was saying, I believe he intends to kill me. Of course, uh, not until I've opened the safe for him. 
if I can bring myself to recall a combination. Oh. You will. You do. Sit down. Now! You heard him! Damn whining, he ain't hurt. I just winged him. You move again, I'll kill you. What the hell's going on out here? Where'd that shot come from? I don't know. I think it came from the Ambrosia. Well, time, Gib. People are coming. Make sure the door's locked. Hurry up. What's wrong, you? Nervous? I don't know who's in there. Get up on top. They got the back of it out there, too, Gib. Damn it, we're trapped. Shit up. Well. Here's your money. I had you proposed to extricate yourselves from this situation. If they aren't already, there will soon be several dozen men out there. And uh, while they're not the Virginia militia, there are some marksmen amongst them. You there in the Ambrosia? Don't know what you're up to, but you're in big trouble. There's no way out. Hannah, get the hell inside. Come on, Gib. We can take them. No. Everyone back off now, or people will start dying. Do what he says. Josiah Peel's been shot. Oh, my God, Newt. All right. Everyone, take it easy. Back off, everyone. Newt, you think you can get up on that balcony over there without being seen? If you keep him busy, I can. Do it. You know, I told you this was a crazy idea. If you weren't so riled up about Mosby, we'd be out of here by now. I'm the boss. If that don't sit right with you, let's settle it right now. Uh, you're one loose cannon, Gib. folks doing in there? Don't believe we've been formally introduced. Name's Owen Kearney. You know, this whole thing can stop right here and now before anybody else gets hurt. It's your call. You know, this reminds me of some fellas in Deadwood. They got it in their mind to rob a bank, got themselves stuck just like you. Of course, you ain't in a bank, but you're in just as much trouble. Nice-looking fellas, too. One wanted to have seen them after it was all over. It was a sorry sight to behold. Are you listening to me in there? The wounded in battle should be cared for. We're all leaving together. Gib, you don't need the woman. People die for all kinds of reasons. Being stupid is about to work. What are we waiting for? Horses are on back. Let's go! Shut up! Now, how can we stop that happening to you? Drop it!
you sure you have to go? Oh, yes. I have a wonderful new opportunity in Denver. It was really too good to pass up. Well, the town will never be the same. I will miss you. Wherever you go, I hope we can put all this behind you. Start over. There are no fresh starts. You might be surprised. Bye, Mr. Beale. job. And I figured things around here might get a little dull. Guess I was wrong. Believe me, Sheriff. It's still a quiet little town. I hope you're right. Oh, um, I almost forgot to give that back to you. Hold on to that, Newt. You may have cause to use it again. Tell me, you ever figure out who was behind all that uh, land grabbing? No. But up around Bismarck a few years back, a couple of fellas got into forcing people off their land. Seems they, uh, they knew the railroad was coming in. Oh, oh well. How'd they end up? Rich. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I take you up on your invitation? Bill, isn't it? Yes, sir. Sheriff Kearney did his best to maintain law and order in our growing town. More and more, I found myself pinning on that badge.
After everything I've been through, I still have trouble figuring out the difference between luck and fate. The day the hell bitch was stolen out from under me might have been bad luck. And as it turned out, I think fate was just playing its hand. to have your company, ladies. A pleasure. Oh, please, monsieur. The contents of that case is very delicate. What? Please allow me. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Thank Got myself a ticket here. All right, come on. Pass it up. I assume there's room for one more. Gotta be on that stage with the diamonds. Let's get after them. Too close to town. Once they're in open country, they'll be easy picking. Listen, brother. Just because he's killed Zeke, don't mean you're giving the orders now. I'm next in line. I'm in need of a ride. Looks to me like you're in a damn hurry to get yourself killed. Well, now you didn't give me no selection. This stage carries mail, son. We don't pick up nobody in the middle of nowhere. Well, you see, I got no other way. I, I've been in the woods a while. I, I lost everything I own and care for. That ain't my problem. I got responsibilities. Get back in, folks. We got a schedule to keep. That's quite a stunt you pulled. You being brave? Or just stupid. I got urgent business. Oh, we got a desperate man here, folks. I'll pay the lad's fare. I don't generally take charity. I will pay you back. Yeah, I think you will. 
We have a full complement of passengers, Mr. Shaw. Ah, I will sit on top. What better way to see this fascinating country? Nobody rides on top, and that's company policy. You, off. That is a shame. Best of luck to you, lad. Well, I don't mind if I sit on the floor, I guess. Thank you, Henry. That settles it, then. I should take care of it. After you. your appearance, sir, it would seem you haven't been to a town for a while. No, ma'am, I haven't. My guess that the man is the genuine article, Mrs. Lyle. He's a mountain man, from the moccasins up to the Blackfoot medicine bag. Is that true? No. A mountain man? Is that a Blackfoot knife? Well, yeah. Like Jim Bridger, who discovered the Great Salt Lake? Not hardly. Born and raised in Texas. Come north on a cattle drive. Ugh. This is most uncomfortable. As I said, he's a genuine article, Mrs. Lyle. And a unique opportunity for us to practice our Christian charity. Mrs. Lyle is a minister's wife. Young man, hold your place, please. It's nothing the boy can do, ma'am. Thanks to you. This really is unfair, sir. I admire you, ma'am. In these times, children need a firm hand, and your daughter is clearly the result of a proper upbringing. I take no credit myself, Mr. Shaw. The good book has been my guide. The good guidebook. Now, the way I see it, Shaw, insurance is the progress business. People in the West are looking for some hedge against their losses, and I'm gonna give it to them. Now, maybe you own a store or a ranch. You'd like to insure against calamity. I only own myself. Well, now, that's insurable, too. I carry several lines of life insurance, and it's payable to anyone you please in the event of your demise. I don't intend to demise for a while, Tupper. Well, intentions are not a factor in my business, Mr. Shaw. Taking life insurance sounds like betting against yourself to me. Way you went about getting a ride? I figure you're a prime candidate. Have you got a wife, Mr. Call. Newt calling, yes, I do. Then you would want to provide for her. I can't think of anything I'd want more. Does your faith provide for those left behind, Mrs. Lyle? My husband and I are Christians. We leave our fate to Providence. God provides for the next world. I take care of this one. You seem to have everything under control, Mr. Tupper. It's the way I live. That's just about what I'd expect from a man like you, Tupper. Young man, it's not his fault, Mama. Perhaps it would be more comfortable if we changed positions, Priscilla. Good idea, Mrs. Lyle. Young minds are easily led astray. <gasps> Adults, however, are capable of making their own decisions. Mr. Shaw! I can't get up! Let me help you. <sighs> Driver!
can't get a clean shot from here. There's too many guns down there anyways. We'll wait till they get moving again. We won't have no trouble getting ahead of them. What brings you out here, Mr. Renell? <laughs> I need to map and classify the Bitterroot mountain range. Is that what that thing's for? Uh, watch. With this, I measure height and distance. I put what I find on paper and come, come. Voila, we have a map like this. First map I saw, most of it was blank. Man could head most anyways and not even know what he was gonna find when he got there. Well, I guess if you keep on mapping, Mr. Renault, there ain't gonna be any more surprises left. But think of what we have discovered, Yosemite. Yellowstone with its geysers. The, the, the Grand Canyon. Come, come. Look. You never know what you will find. Ah, what's them mountains right on your left? Precisely. Newt, Newt. Something moved. What? I don't know. It's saw something. It's gone now. <laughs> it takes time to learn to use a transit properly. Guess you gotta go to school to learn that. At the Sorbonne in Paris. I also studied at the Sheffield Academy here in your country. Got a bugle horn in there? Uh, yes, sir. Play for the army. Don't mind me saying, but you seem kind of young to be leading charges. I ain't no horseman yet. I'm gonna be a bugler for the garrison at Fort McNabb. Henry, if you want to hang on to your scalp out here, you'd better keep your hat on. Every Indian in Montana territory love to have that head of blonde hair hanging off his belt. He's only joking you, Henry. Is that so? You an Indian fighter, Mr. Cole? Traveling's hard enough, Mr. Shaw. No need to make it worse. I was just passing time, Mr. Cole. Whoa, whoa. So, what's the plan? You ride ahead, I'll keep on their tail. Get a chance at a clean shot, take it. I'm sure we all wonder what precisely it is that you do, Mr. Shaw. I solve problems, Tupper. Where well, we all solve problems, Mr. Shaw. Occasionally, companies or individuals encounter difficulties that require special handling. They engage my service. What the hell? Henry, move! Incroyable! Why are you being shot at? Just try to stay calm, man. <laughs> It's too late to get one of those policies, Topper. The odds are only one in a million of passengers being killed in a stagecoach robbery. That's cold comfort, Mr. Topper. Now, there's no need to worry, ma'am. Tables will tell you. 
I admire your courage, sir. Thank you. Don't be scared, Priscilla. These horses can probably outrun about anything. Except a 50 caliber. Get them both. Nah, just the guard. Damn. Come on. Children, I think it's time for us to say some prayers. Well, I, I don't know any words, ma'am. I'm sorry. J just say after me, children. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not be. There's nothing wrong with prayer, Mr. Shaw. Uh, Carried into the midst of the sea. Damn wheel of smoke. You must remove the hub and grease it with lard every 40 miles. Where did you learn that, Renault? Books, Monsieur Shaw. There are worlds in books. Well, there's a world out there, Renault. A real world. Think we can outrun them? So far, they've been keeping up. We don't grease that wheel, and can matter what we do. This cabin's not too far along. Riding with Ben for five years. Sure hate to leave him there behind. That was courageous, sir. Courage has got nothing to do with it, Mr. Shaw. I just want to get these people home. Must be a powerful urge. Yes, it is. Stay down now, miss. At least we are safe behind these logs, no? Can't hide anywhere from a sharps, Renault. An experienced shooter can pick a man off a half a mile away. 39% of bullet wounds to the leg? Result in amputation. Why don't you shut up, Tupper? Why the hell don't you? Bullet passed clean through. This is going to hurt. Ah! Ah! Jeez! Ah! Oh, God! <laughs> Losing a leg would be a hell of a lot easier than that stuff you're using. Ah! Learn that, ma'am. My husband and I were missionaries in China. We had to learn all sorts of things in order to survive. Loosen this every two or three minutes. That'll help the circulation. Do you understand? I'm doing my best. We're lucky to have you here, ma'am. Not that we're lucky to be here all. I see him. He's coming down over that ridge. This is fantastic to be involved in a, in a real gun fight. It's even better when you have a gun. I think you enjoy mixing the pot, Mr. Shaw. I'm just a student of human nature.
been shot at before? Uh, not hardly. Don't like it that much either. I can't imagine anyone with any sense liking it. Well, I'm supposed I'm a soldier. I never wanted to be, though. There were six of us living at home, and Pa couldn't feed us all. The army was the only place to take me. You look real young for the army. I lie about my age. How old are you? Fourteen. And that's the truth. So your pa's a minister? Methodist. He's come here to bring the word. It seems like we're always going someplace lonely so we can preach. Well, Fort McNam's right next to Curtis Wales. Priscilla, come here this minute. Priscilla! I've been thinking. Oh, and the French have a wonderful capacity for thought. The stage, it has a strong box, yes? That's 100% certain. Ah, good thought. Our adversaries have come for the strong box. If this is a robbery, why aren't we getting robbed? Because it's easier to pick us off and take the money when we're dead than to get shot trying to get it. We're carrying a special load. Near 600 and go. We can't just sit here and wait to be shot to pieces. You could turn the other cheek, Mrs. Lyle. We should just give them the damn strong box and be done with it. That's an excellent idea. Can't. Company policy. Like hell, you say! You can't do anything to stop us. Mother! Now just hold on. Gold ain't worth dying for. Of course, there are exceptions. Excellent. Now all we have to do is decide who takes the strong box to them. We all agree then. Those who draw the two longest sticks move the strong box. As I see it, the shooters will have to come down here to get what they want, so they'll probably wait till nighttime. Meaning? Meaning we'll have time to think about the situation. I agree. Now let's think on it. No. More time we take, more time they'll have to pick us off. Exactement. We must choose. You first, Mr. Topper. Why me? Well, because. You've got insurance. <laughs> yes, sir. No, I ain't gonna do it. It's a damn fool plan anyway. Mr. Tupper, you are a coward. I'd go myself if I weren't responsible for a child. Is that so? You trust in Providence? Well, I believe in fact. You go out there and you're going to die. Hey, Newt. I'll go. Henry. Well, it would seem the bravery has descended on the shoulders of children. No. Henry, you can't go. I will go. It will be an aventure. Something to write to Paris about. Think twice, Mr. Renault. This is not a plan, it's a gamble. Then? I will roll the dice. Tales are told by those who survive their adventures, sir. Do you have enough shots, son? Don't know. Haven't counted the gang yet. I'd say there were two. Mrs. Lyle, would you miss a small piece of your petticoat? Uh, for the white flag. Mademoiselle? Merci beaucoup. Le Renault, bonne chance. Looks running good so far. I'll take this.
still can. Come on. There's only two things on a stage, ma'am. People and money. Don't seem like they want the money. Well, it certainly isn't me. And it ain't me. Henry's too young. Priscilla's too fair. What do you want? I'm talking to you. Randolph Shaw. It appears they want me. Knew it. I knew it. I was 100% certain. Send him out. Then the rest of you go free. Randolph Shaw. You murdering, back shooting coward. Get your hide out here. What's this all about, Mr. Shaw? It's about him putting our lives in danger. Maybe you better ask them. Maybe you better tell us. I don't think I'm so inclined. He shot my brother in the back. Back shooter. You don't send him out. I'm gonna pick you off one by one. You get out of there, Shaw. I ain't dying cause of you. I don't believe I will. Get out there. My daughter's not being killed because of a coward. Oh, that is a fine Christian sentiment, Mrs. Lyle. But how do you know they are telling the truth? You're the one they want! Out! Get out there, Mr. Shaw! We are in danger because of you! Make him leave, Mr. Cole! I can't do that, ma'am. He's right. We don't know what the truth is. Of course we know! Who else could it be? Yes, we do. I do. You are a loathsome man, Mr. Shaw. Do you mean you are sorry? for showing me what was under your petticoats. How dare you! You are the cause of this. You are a despicable creature, a horrid, evil man who disgusts me. I am a married woman. Mama, stop it! Stop it! Hush up! I saw how you looked at him. are certainly a mystery. Come on! We will stop you! Let's go! Let's go! Come on, come on. It's nice of you to show up. Even I am prone to moments of stupidity. A man who moves and shoots like that is a lawman or an outlaw. You owe us the truth, Mr. Shaw. I'm a firm believer in the truth. I'm a Pinkerton agent. In the course of an arrest, I killed a man named Ezekiel Baumer. Ezekiel and his two brothers murdered a diamond courier on his way to Canada and the owners Hired my firm, get the diamonds back. Well, the boys out there must think I've got them. Do you? I didn't find them on Ezekiel. Must have stashed them somewhere. Must not have told his kin. You could have told us all this right off. Would it have made any difference? Ask Mr. Renault. He should have known better than to go out there. You should have known better than to fool with me. I think you're going to help me fix things. I don't feel any such obligation. Well, that's a pity. Because I feel very strongly. Uh, your caution, Newt. I assume you've got a plan. 
Well, those men are hunting us. What they're not expecting is for us to hunt them. And you got anything more than that, Colt? Got this. You got a rifle in there, too? I prefer to work close. Send out Randolph Shaw! Or we're gonna burn that cabin! You ever use one of these, Henry? Uh, yes, sir. Well, a few times. What you leaving with me? We're leaving Henry. See you on the high ground. Better let me have that. I think you better sit down, Mr. Tupper. this one. The other one? You best pray, Shaw. I'm gonna keep coming till you're in the ground. He shot Ezekiel in the back. No spine to face him. Used a little gun. Took my brother a long time to die. You can tell your story to the judge in Mild City, Silas. Tell him what happened when you took them diamonds off Zeke. Get them for yourself. You did. You're worse than us, Shaw. 
We set curious all faces for he die. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. Right, Silas. I did all those things. I'll take him back to the stage. the rest of my life looking over my shoulder. That's unavoidable, Mr. Shaw, seeing the way you live. You surprise me, Mr. Call. You of all people must understand the man was a murderer. He killed Reno. Would have killed you, too. All of us, for that matter. The way I see it, Mr. Shaw, you caused it to happen. That's your opinion. I say he was trying to escape. Then I'll take the diamond, Shaw. Oh, they can make you very rich? They make me no better than you. You're no lawman, Shaw. You're nothing but a back-shooting murderer. Hard world out there, Newt. The kind of men that I hunt down don't follow any rules. I did what I was hired to do. Can't fault me for that. The law can. Take the knife away. You don't intend to use it. I intend to stop you any way I can. You have a very suspicious nature for someone so young. That can be a burden, especially to those around you. No judge will find me guilty. It's your word against mine. We'll see. Let's move. High moral purpose tends to get a man killed. Some things are worth dying for. died a hero, and I buried him alongside two men who may not have been worthy of the same resting place. I marked his grave the best way I knew how, with his survey tripod facing north, toward the Bitterroot Range. God willing, Priscilla, we will be with your father in a few hours. I've asked Henry to dinner. What a lovely idea, dear. We'll be back in Curtis Wells before you know it. Say, if you're in need of any assistance with Mr. Shaw there, I'd be happy to oblige. Well, thank you, Mr. Tupper. A coward is an unusual animal. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Call? Yes, I would. Do you think that uh, you and Reverend Lyle might reconsider your position on insurance now? We might, Mr. Tupper. God willing. God willing. Yeah!
diamonds got back to their rightful owner. Shaw was put behind bars for a spell, and then I heard that he was hanged for a murder of a man in Miles City some years later. I guess the hell bitch didn't take to her new surroundings. That mare always did what pleased her. And on this day, she had it in her mind to head for home. Some call that fate. I call it luck. Travis, you're a free man. I, I don't understand. I got six months left. Warden decided to cut you loose. Wasn't my idea. Get his chains off. You mean it? I, I, I can go? Unless you'd rather stay here. Yes, sir. I suppose you come in. You stay out of trouble. Yes, sir. This ain't your fight, mister. It is when somebody starts shooting at me. What the hell's going on in there? Fell in there's a no good skunk named Potter. Broke out of prison. Why don't I try to run around the back, catch him in the crossfire? Uh, we could give it a try. Don't get yourself shot. Ready? Go!
In my day, there wasn't much time for niceties. Everybody was flat out getting on with the troublesome business of just surviving. When it came to judging a man's character, all you had to go on were your instincts. And those instincts had better be right if you were planning on a long life. Potter, it's your choice. I can take you in on your hind legs or swung across a saddle. One way or t'other, I'm bringing you in. Like hell! There's two against one! Now throw out your gun! We can outlast you. Don't shoot me now. I'm coming out. Easy now, Potter. Throw the gun down. Get your hands on your head. Damnation. I wish he hadn't made you do that. Me too. What'd he do? Killed my brother in cold blood. How'd he come to kill your brother? Potter held up a bank a few years back. He shot Zach busting out of prison. They should have hung him. For robbing a bank? His kind never learned, like a dog gone bad. Not much good for anything and too much trouble to keep around. I knew a man did some time. Come out, lived a pretty decent life. I never met one yet. You know, you did the world a kindness sending Potter to his maker. I never had a taste for killing. Never will. First stop we ought to make is the jail. Sheriff Kearney's gonna wanna know what happened. Owen Kearney? That's right. You know him? I know him all right. Common criminal. He was always trouble. You made a mistake, Father. A mistake is when you spell a word wrong. He robbed a bank. No, he didn't. No, not exactly. He spent nearly three years in prison. That ought to be enough. I hope he learned something. The stage is due any time. You coming? We'll be right with you, Mrs. Haggard. Good of you to take him back in, Dorothy. Oh, it's the least I could do. Giving him a home after his folks died is one thing, but you have the patience of a saint. I'm all he has. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be meeting that stage. What do you mean?
Aunt Dorothy? Surprise! <laughs> I thought you all forgot. Oh, oh, heavens, child. How could we do such a thing? Good to see you. <laughs> Hello, Travis. Oh, hi. This was all his notion. Who, me? I uh, should have known. Someone's got to keep on your toes. Good to see you. It's good to have you home. Oh, it's good to be back. Is that a chocolate cake? You know it is. <laughs> Remember that fishing trip we were talking about? How's tomorrow morning's out? I'll be ready to crack it down. I suppose Austin wrote you that I'm married now. Yeah. Couldn't wait for me, could you? <laughs> Travis gets the first piece. First, second, and third. Who's <laughs> that? You sidewinder. If this don't beat all. Rance here was my deputy down in Cheyenne for over two years. Yeah, he was telling me. It was almost three. What the hell are you doing in these parts? We ran into some trouble. Uh, up in the hills, just north of town. Rance here tried to make him come along real peaceful. You have nothing of it. His name's Billy Potter. Oh, I'll be. Some paper came through about him a while back. Busted out of prison over in Helena. About six weeks ago. Hundred dollar price on his head, too. Is that right? Mm hmm. Or half of that's yours, Newt. The bounty don't sit right with me. It's all yours. I know how you feel. I suppose I could give it to my brother's family. You're a sight for sore eyes. Look at you. Oh, oh and look at that hair. <laughs> I've never seen such a beautiful sight in all my days. Ah, <laughs> uh, so good to be home, Aunt Dorothy. Now, I know I was a trial to you before, but this time things are going to be different. I swear. I know they will, Travis. I know. What was it like? What, prison? <laughs> Unless you've been at a tea party for the past two and a half years. <laughs> well, I guess the worst part about it's my hair. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, it ain't like nothing. You know, they work you like a dog on a chain gang. Building and the like, and feed you slop. You wouldn't even feed a hog. And if the guards ain't beating on you for one thing, then the convicts is doing it for some other. Hmm. Well, what'd you miss the most? Other than women. Hmm. This. Just you and me, fishing. And you know, sometimes at night I'd close my eyes and I'd I try and wish myself here. You know, you're the only one that wrote to me when I was in there. You and Aunt Dorothy. It meant a lot. Why'd you have to go get yourself killed, you stupid son of a bitch? Monroe. Just paying my last respects. Lonesome Dove? What happened to Unity? You've been gone a long time, Travis. Things change. Yeah, I see they got a new jailhouse. Seen enough of jails, thank you. So is this still a one-horse town? There's a gambling house now. Gambling? There's a chance for this town yet. <laughs> Austin, how's the fishing? Oh, not so bad. Oh, uh, Newt, this is Travis. Uh, Newt's my brother-in-law. Oh, Newt, good to meet you. Hannah's been talking up a storm about you. You're a lucky man. Hannah and Travis used to be sweet on each other when we first settled here. No, don't be saying that. Uh, she already told me. I reckon you're not here to steal her away. <laughs> no, my stealing days is done. Thank you. Here you got into some shooting. Yeah, the other fella got the worst of it, though. Who was he? A man named Potter. Just uh, bust out of prison up near Helena. Potter? Billy Potter? Yeah. They got him in the ground yet? I don't think so. Eddie? 
How'd you know, uh, Potter? He was part of the gang when we robbed that bank in Copper Creek. I don't know what the heck he come out this way for. You suppose he was coming after you? Can't say it. No way he'd have known that I got sprung. Sad that I had no quarrel with him. <sighs> Looks like your dumb luck finally run out, Bill. Seems like a nice little town. Man could get comfortable here. You know how it is. Never can tell when trouble will blow through. Newt's always willing to pin on the badge when I need him to, but uh, he's got a ranch he's trying to get up and running. Sounds like you got your hands full. I could use a hand. You interested? Me? I got to ride up to Miles City testifying for Judge Calder. You'd be helping me out of a bind if you'd mind the jail for a few days. What about Newt? Like I said, he's got a ranch to run. When I get back, we could talk to the town council about making the job permanent, if that suits you. I don't know what to say. Try, uh, yes. I'll just add that up for you. Uh, when you're finished with that, would you mind restocking the shelves for me, please? Happy to oblige. Yeah, that settled your account, Mrs. O'Connor. Thank you. Are you a jailbird? Well, that all depends. Are you a worm? Good day, Dorothy. Folks don't mean to be unkind. Hmm. I guess they just come by it naturally. Travis. Are you sure you feel all right about this now? Why, because he just got out of prison? Or because you once had your cap set for him? <laughs> Both, I suppose. I guess it's just water under the bridge. Isn't it? Well, yeah. Hello, Travis. Oh, Hannah. How are things? Oh, pretty fair. Newt. Hello, Mrs. Hackett. Hello. Oh, my. That's a lovely pin. Well, thank you. It was my mother's. Well, I said. Hey, you still looking for work, Travis? Oh, oh, well. I got some breeding stock over at the uh, livery. I could use a hand running them out to our spread. Oh, you know, I'd love to, but uh, now nah, I got I got plenty to do around here. Oh, go on. All that fresh air and hard work will be good for you. Come on. Uh, I don't got a horse. Don't worry, I can fix you up with one. Oh, that'd be great. I'll just grab my gear. <laughs> <laughs> that was very kind of you. Oh, this has got nothing to do with charity, Miss Hackett. I do need the help. All the same, I asked all around to see who might have work for him. Folks don't cotton to a convict in their midst. There you go. Lead the way. <laughs> Good day, Mrs. Atkin. Good day. Samuel, I'll be uh, running them horses out today. Well, it's good to see that ranch here is getting off the ground, dude. Well, we're trying to make a go of it. You know, uh, my stock ain't broke yet, so well, my friend Travis here will need a loan of a horse. <clears throat> uh, well, since he's a friend of yours, come on, I'll fix you up.
Out to Miles City, are you? Back in a few days. So how does it feel to be a rancher instead of a deputy? Just fine. Um, yeah, uh, watch yourself on the trail. Hey. And give my best to Judge Calder. Will do. Good work, Travis. Well, thank you, Newt. I ain't said a horse in three years. I noticed they're not getting any softer. Hannah's got coffee on. We can go inside and set a spell. Say, Newt, I've been meaning to tell you. It's a good thing you got Billy Potter, because uh, he'd have killed you just as soon as he'd spit. I appreciate it. Now, he's a hothead. Once he set his mind to something, well, he couldn't bicker with him. How'd you fall in with that bunch, anyhow? Well, Billy and Heck Webster, they kind of took a shine to me, took me over to Sweetwater, learned me the ways of the world. It was fun for a while. But you know, to this day, I still don't know how they got involved with that bank robbery. I'm out there holding the horses, and they come running out making their getaway, and I'm left holding the blame. My hands up just, please don't shoot, don't shoot. You know, that's, that's how that one happened. Well, who got the gold? I sure didn't. I wasn't getting at that. I... Oh, uh, sorry, Nate. Um, it, it was Webster. He got clean away with it. No one's seen or heard from him since. And they got Billy halfway to Bozeman with a bullet in his leg. Me, I ended up wasting three years of my life for nothing. <laughs> Friend Potter got worse than that. You ever give any more thought why he come back this way? I'm still thinking. Nude? Anna? Travis. What is it? I can't find my mother's pen. I've been looking everywhere. Well, it's got to be around someplace. I have checked every inch of this cabin, Newt, and it's nowhere to be found. Well, did you check the wagon? I'm sure I had it on when I came in. Things just don't disappear. Hey, Travis, you seen her pen? What are you saying? I took it? I know. Nobody's saying that. It's I... just missing, that's all, Travis. It'll turn up someplace. Like it's going to turn up my pocket, is that what you mean? Nobody's accusing you of anything, Travis. Look, you know, I, I think I'd best leave now before anything else goes missing. I won't be stealing that horse, Newt. Travis! Listen, Travis, now, I don't care what anybody says. I don't hold prison against you. Any man work for Newt, call. Work for me anytime. You need a job. You come to me, you hear? Hey. All right. Much obliged. So, you just got out of prison, huh? Deputy, I done my time. I don't need you down my neck. Seems it didn't teach you any respect for the law. Just leave me be. I guess you're not clear about how it's gonna be around here from now on. You're gonna answer to me. I'm gonna keep an eye on you. You understand? Take your hands off me. You're dumber than I thought. Let's go. I'd like to talk with Travis. Travis, you got company. You gotta get me out of here. I'm gonna try. Care to tell me what happened? Well, now I got an answer to you too. Travis, I'm your friend. I'm just trying to help you out here. When Hannah's pin went missing, I got spooked. And it was only a matter of time before they started pointing a finger at me. It's not that way at no, all. No, you don't you... understand. Walking around town, I feel everyone's eyes burning in my back. 
I go out last night just to cool off, and it was that deputy that started it. They found a pin in the carriage just after you rode off. You gotta get me out of here. How much is his fine? Sheriff will decide that when he gets back. Well, can't be more than five dollars, can it? Gotta be at least ten. Ten dollars? You can wait for Kearney to get back. There's no telling how long he'll be. So is this the way it's going to be, Travis? I thought things would be different this time. Well, they are. I was only in prison for one night. Oh, Aunt Dorothy, I'm sorry, but I just haven't been around decent folk in a while, and it takes some getting used to. I'm trying. I am. Well, maybe you are. This can't happen again. Well, it won't. And let me tell you why. Because after two and a half years in prison, the only thing that scares me is the idea of letting you down again. Charm the whiskers off a kitten. <laughs> hey there, Nuke. Pull up a chair. No, thanks. Something wrong? You tell me, Rance. That ruckus at the Ambrosia last night, what was that about? What, that? It was nothing, really. Austin seems to think that you pushed Travis into a fight. Me and I, his kind are. Man spends a few years behind bars. Gets kind of squirrely on you. I don't know. I can't see Travis picking a fight with the deputy either. He's trying to make an honest go of it. Why don't you just let him be? Look, I'm just doing my job, Newt. If you've got such a problem with me being deputy, why do you take it up with Kearney when he gets back? I intend to. standing there like that. A while. I reckon I owe you an apology. No, you don't. I wish I could say I didn't think you'd taken it. But I have to admit, it did cross my mind. Oh, well, thanks. For being honest, I mean. So, you remember the last time you and me in a barn together? <laughs> Lord. I'm not for sure your daddy'd catch us. Oh, he did. Figured it out when I had all that straw in my hair. Now you're married. Nate's a good man. Yes, he most certainly is. So are you. If you give yourself half a chance, other people will too. Yeah. Afternoon. Deputy. I was curious, uh, you keep old copies of your newspaper? How far back? Three years. Around the time of that bank robbery up in uh, Copper Creek. Oh, I think I can dig something up for you. You'll have to give me some time. I'll be back in spell, thanks. Is this uh, for official business? Yeah, you could say that. 
Haven't you given that kid enough trouble? I don't get your meaning. Just because Travis was mixed up in that bank robbery doesn't give you the right to bother him. He was in on that? Yes, as if you didn't know. As a matter of fact, Mr. Peel, I didn't. Funny how things work out. If Travis hadn't gone to prison, who knows what might have happened. <laughs> did you really have feelings for him? I suppose I did. It was a long time ago, though. I guess I don't have a reason to be jealous, do I? <laughs> Hardly. You're my husband. He's just a boy I used to know. Time to pack it in, son. Well, I just got one more stall to clean out, sir. <laughs> I pay by the day, not the hour. Oh, I know. Say, where'd you give this saddle? It's mine. Took it off a horse I found running wild about three years back. Why? Oh, it's just awful different looking, isn't it? <laughs> Good night. Good night. You're a hard worker, boy. I'm impressed. Not many men fresh out of prison have your uh, gumption. Just what do you want now? Well, it seems you and I have something in common. A man called Potter? Never heard of him. Well, now, I've been checking up on him, and uh, your name came up. You just can't leave me alone, can you? All right, I knew Potter. I haven't seen or heard of him until I saw him stretched out at the Undertaker's, all right? I say you're lying. Gang pulls off a robbery. Two of them come back a few years later, sniffing around. I say they're after more and memories of days gone by. I say the three of you planned a little reunion, split up the loot. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Webster's long gone, and I don't know nothing about no gold. I'm going to ask you this once, boy. When's Webster coming back? Go to hell. What's that boy up to? What the hell? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Hughes. Sorry, sight's more like it. Every horse in here could have run off. Place could have burnt to the ground. Uh, it was that deputy. Folks trust their stock with me. I, I can't afford this kind of trouble. Now you gotta go. Look, I'll pay you for today, but that's the best I can do. I know Rance is an old friend of yours, Sheriff, but he's let that badge go clean to his head. <sighs> can't say I'm surprised. After all the things I've been hearing about him. I thought you knew this man. So did I. I ran into Marshall Tobias up in Miles City. He gave me the long and short about what's going on with Rance since him and me parted company. He's been in some sort of trouble? 
The worst kind. He's no lawman. He's a bounty hunter. What? Citizens down in Silver Bowl run him out of town for beating a prisoner half to death. Then him and his brother took up a taste for blood money. You the one Potter killed? He's not dead. Zach's a prisoner for a knife and a soldier over at Fort Ellis. So everything he said has been a damn lie? Right. I want that man run out of Curtis Wells, Sheriff. So do I, Josiah. So do I. I've been waiting up all night for you. What happened? Nothing. brave when you're sneaking up on a man in the dark. How are you at facing me in daylight? You better go on home, boy, before you get yourself killed. Face me. Now. You're a big man. Shouldn't do this, Travis. I don't want to kill you. him and me. I don't allow bounty hunters in my town. And that includes you. Well, you know me better than that, Owen? I thought I did. But you've crossed over the line, Rance, and there's no going back. You know better than the men you hunt down. It's time you left our town. You gonna let this pup talk for you? Pick up your gear and clear out. Now! I can't blame you for going after Telford like that. Well, why did he come after you? Same reason he's after Potter. I thought it was after the reward. No. He's after the gold. You mean from the robbery? I thought the other fella made off with it. Uh, that's what I thought, too, till I found this last night. This is Heck Webster's saddle. Mr. Hughes said it came in off a riderless horse about three years back. That means Heck never got nowhere with gold. You know where it is. I suspect I do. Lee Potter and Webster were gonna use this place as a hideout. Supposed to meet up here after the robbery. This is where Telford had Potter pinned down. Could be he was looking for the gold, too. It could be those two would work something out and they never let me in on it. There's a root cellar we were gonna hide out in if we had to. There's a door around here somewhere.
Can you see anything? Oh my lord. What's down there? Webster. Or what's left of him anyways. You see anything else down there, Nate? Looky here. Austin! What is it? Are you all right? The gold! <laughs> Old Heck must have got himself shot up pretty bad in the getaway. Waiting for Potter to come save him. Too dead. For what? This could all be been yours, Travis. Can't say I haven't thought about it, but that gold ain't mine, never was. Then you won't mind me taking it then. Drop your gun belts. Now, move back from that box. I knew you was holding out on me, Travis. I knew if I stirred the pot, you'd lead me right to it. Enough men have died for that gold. Why don't you take it? It's yours. Down the hole. All of you. Come on, Travis. What do you aim to do, mister? Take a wild guess, friend. Down there, Travis. Sorry to have to end this way, boys. Talk some sense into him, Austin. Travis, think about this. I talked to Mr. Hughes. He said you'd give your job back at the livery stable. This town sees a mark gain on me. Nah, best move on. See you again. Take care of yourself. And Dorothy. Oh, oh. Thanks for everything. Hold up there, young fella. Wait a sec, Sheriff. I'm leaving town. Isn't that enough? We've still got some unfinished business to deal with. Well, what is this? Two hundred dollars. What for? For the gold you recovered. No, I, I don't want any part of that gold. It's not the gold, exactly. The bank had a reward out for its return. You could have just run off with it, but you didn't. Honest man deserves a break, don't you think? Well, I was leaving town anyways. Reckon I could buy a horse first. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, let's go. $200, didn't plan on that. Hey, Austin! There are times when we all veer off the beaten path and go astray. Every now and then, some have the choice to backtrack and change direction. Travis made that choice and went on to lead a pretty decent life. It's like Hannah said, if you give yourself half a chance, most likely others will too. <laughs>